Welcome to a mid-engine driver's car comparison. Today we've got two of the best driving mid-engine cars, in my opinion, from the last 20 years. Right now we're in this 2006 Lotus Elise with a naturally aspirated 1.8 liter 2ZZ engine, and we'll be comparing it to a 2012 Porsche Cayman R. Now the owner, Christian, has done a few mods to this Elise, but the full list will be in the video description. So we've got a Sonic Fury DE muffler, Simply Sports Cars cold air intake, stock Lotus Touring wheels, 16 inch in the front, 17 in the back, and we're on some Advan Neova 8007 tires. Eno Kinetic CG and GS shift cables, and a Monkey Wrench Racing Forge Steel lightweight flywheel. And then for suspension, we've got the Racetech SCCA shocks with stock springs. With that being said, let's revisit the Lotus Elise. I've driven so many of these, but I always come back to this car because it's such a fantastic driving experience. It's so raw, it's so lightweight at just under 2,000 pounds. And although 190 horsepower doesn't sound like much, the power to weight ratio is still very, very good. And this engine revs out to 8,500 RPM. <laughs> Listen to that sound of that little 2CZ engine. So good with this exhaust. It's such an amazing sounding little engine, this Toyota 2CZ. No power steering in this Elise. In my opinion, this car has the best steering feel of any car I've ever driven. It's absolutely incredible. You feel everything through this small diameter steering wheel. And even though it's manual, it's not overly heavy. It still feels light because the car is so light. The amount of grip this car produces in the corners is just outrageous. I basically don't have to brake even on this tight canyon road. it pulls quite a bit harder than something like an S2000 or even a new Subaru BRZ. <laughs> it's a spine tingling driving experience. much grip. There is a little bit of understeer if you really push it hard, but keep in mind we're only on a 175 section width front tire. Very, very narrow contact patch, even for a car this light and this small. I think with something like a 205 section width, the car would feel even more neutral. Another interesting thing about the 2006 model year Elise is that it moved from a traditional cable throttle to drive by wire. So there is no direct connection between my right foot and the throttle body. And despite that fact, the throttle response of this car is just razor sharp. It doesn't feel like most drive by wire systems I've tried. There's no slop in the throttle response whatsoever. Now, even with this upgraded shifter linkage, it's still not the best shifter in the world. Far from it, actually. That three to two downshift is a little bit tricky. Brakes are fantastic. There's so much feel through the pedal. Even though this car doesn't have ABS, I can just very accurately modulate the braking force. Everything about this car feels like it's one-to-one. -one. The throttle response, the brakes, even the clutch feels really, really nice. It's linear. And this suspension, while it is definitely firm, it handles the bumps on this very bumpy road brilliantly, these SCCA shocks. What a fantastic driving machine. This is one of the most focused and enjoyable driving experiences you can have for less than $50,000. A clean, 
and let's say moderate mileage 2006 Lotus Elise will run you right around forty to fifty thousand dollars here in the U.S. And for that money, I cannot think of a single car that is so purpose built while also being street legal. Uh, you might argue you could get something like a Caterham, but hey, this car you can actually drive on a daily basis. Not that I would want to, but I've got a roof over my head. I can take the top off if I want and enjoy a nice sunny day. I actually have AC. I mean, in terms of driving dynamics, it just doesn't get much better than this. But with that said, there's another mid-engine sports car that I've driven in the past that completely blew me away with how raw and visceral the driving dynamics felt. And that, of course, is the 2012 Porsche Cayman R. Let's see if the best from Germany 10 years ago can still hold a candle to one of the best driving mid-engine cars of all time. All right, so the 2012 Porsche Cayman R. First thing to know is that this is quite a bit more expensive nowadays compared to a 2006 Elise. Only around 1,100 of these cars were made worldwide. So the rarity factor is strong with this one. On the used market today, an average condition Cayman R will go for around $70,000. And there are examples north of 80,000. So it's a solid 20 to 30, maybe even 40 grand more than an equivalent condition Lotus Elise. But does it drive better? That's what we're gonna try to answer today. The Cayman R is powered by a 3.4 liter flat six naturally aspirated that produces 335 horsepower and around 260-ish foot-pounds of torque. So it's almost 150 horsepower up on that Lotus Elise, but this car weighs over 2,900 pounds. The owner, Yo, weighed it in with basically no gas in the tank at 2,907. So 900 pounds more than that Lotus Elise. Let's see how that translates once we start pushing a little bit. Well, first things first, hydraulic power steering in the Cayman R. It's not a manual rack. It's also not the newer EPS system. Hydraulic has always been a very good balance, in my opinion, of steering feel and steering comfort for daily driving. This Cayman R has a great hydraulic rack for sure. There is a tiny bit of slop just on center, but once it's loaded up, it feels good. You can feel each and every bump in the road without it being harsh on a daily basis, which can't be said about that Lotus Elise's super raw manual rack. 7,400 RPM redline from this flat six engine makes a great sound. I wish there was a little bit more induction noise. It's got a very baritone sound to it. There's no rasp from this exhaust. And the induction note isn't quite as metallic as I'd like it to be from a naturally aspirated flat six, but still very good. Shifter feel in this car is so-so. It's definitely average. It has a slight looseness when you're shifting gear. It's not the most positive engagement. <laughs> The difference in torque between this and the Elise is astronomic, but when you're revving the engine out in both cars, this doesn't feel like a different league of straight line performance because it's so much heavier and because you're more isolated from the road. Your sensation of speed is much greater in that Lotus. Good throttle response though. Drive by wire in this Cayman R and it feels linear, it feels just as good as it does in that Elise. But I can tell it has a much heavier flywheel. It doesn't rev up and down as quickly. Now Yo has some apex wheels with track tires on this thing. Running 255 front, 275 rear, Falcon RT660. So there's no way we're gonna lose grip today. This tire is just so grippy out here. One thing I'm not a big fan of is the gearing. The stock gearing of the six-speed manual is very long, at least for a car with 330-odd horsepower. I wish it was geared like 5% shorter, just so I could enjoy the manual transmission a little bit more and keep the engine in its power band a little bit more effectively. This engine does make good torque down low, 
but really it's the 5,000 to 7,400 RPM range where you wanna keep this thing when you're driving aggressively. By modern standards, this is an exceptionally light car. Anything under 3,000 pounds is very light in this day and age, and it feels light compared to basically any car you can buy in the market right now, short of a Subaru BRZ, Toyota GR86, or a ND2 Miata. But I have to admit, jumping out of the Lotus Elise into this 900 pound heavier Cayman R, the difference is shocking. It doesn't feel nearly as light on its feet, and that's all just due to basic physics. 900 pounds is a huge weight differential. So in the corners, going deep into the brakes, the inertia of this car makes it feel just a lot less eager compared to that Elise. But it's a much, much more refined driving experience. Way less squeaks and rattles inside the car. I mean, that Elise is just a little squeak box. All sorts of noises and rattles and squeaks all inside the car. Whereas this Cayman R is, you have to remember, it's still based on the normal Porsche Cayman. It's still meant to be a reasonably comfortable daily driver. You got a frunk, you have a rear trunk that's quite usable. The only thing that really makes the R noticeably more hardcore than a regular Cayman S is the suspension. Higher spring rates, retune shocks, and different anti-roll bars make this car definitely a pretty firm ride. Compared to the Elise, it's like a luxury car, but compared to basically anything else out there, it is quite firm. <laughs> Pulls nicely though. It really does feel like just enough power for this weight of car. 330-ish horsepower in a 2,900 pound car. That's the sweet spot. <laughs> Look at Kevin here, just absolutely enamored with the Elise, his first time driving one. In conclusion, what do I think about these two mid-engine masterpieces? They're both really excellent driver's cars in their own way. But I have to say, as a pure driving experience, if you don't care about comfort, if you don't care about streetability, the Elise is the best driving mid-engine sports car of all time. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.